anybody that just seems like they cannot stop lying no matter what they do, even <laughs> after you've had like the come to Jesus heart to heart. Look, th this can't keep going on like this conversations. And then it just I'm, keeps going. I'm raising my hand. My yeah. brother's that way. Oh, oh, that's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Uh, he's told so many lies that he he believes them. He's one of those people. Mm -hmm. uh, he believes that he is a government agent and has killed people on behalf of the agents or the, the government. Excuse me. Would you be shocked someday if you found out that he actually was? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. I'd, I'd be mortified. And I think he's just this way because of drug use. But yeah, yeah. He, it's somebody where you look at him and go, he just gave me the we weather forecast. There's no way I believe this. Yeah. I mean, that's how much lying this guy does. So yeah, I personally, I know a, a pretty good liar. There's a lot of but people yeah. out there in the world that, that seem to be able to live this life. They just kind of keep recycling who they're around uh, so they can continue living their bizarre fantasies. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're behind bars uh, and you can no longer recycle people through your life, kind of catches up to you. Corey Richens is the person who it seems to be catching up to. Corey Richens, the mother who wrote the children's book about grief after her husband died of a fentanyl overdose uh, from fentanyl in his Moscow mule. Corey accused of serving him, that Moscow mule. Uh, and there's a lot of evidence that says he was very suspicious of his wife uh, leading up to his death. Well, if you remember uh, not that long ago, uh, Miss Richens uh, had a letter that was confiscated from the jail. And we're going to go into that story and exactly what happened with the letter and what she now claims the letter actually meant that it wasn't necessarily a way to influence uh, witnesses or tamper with witnesses. It was something completely different. What sure. was it, though? That is the, uh, that's the question, and that's what we're uh, going to get uh, into uh, right now. Richens, of course, gained that inf uh, infamy by writing that book about grief following the murder of her husband. She now insists that the, sir, uh, the suspicious letter that was retrieved from her cell earlier in the week it was a snippet from a work of fiction she's crafting. Well, there you go. She oh. says it's true. It must be. Case closed. Oh, you know, Tony, why didn't we think of this? That she's just writing a screenplay. This just seems like such a fifth grade way of thinking. Like, I could totally <laughs> see myself in fifth grade if I was, like, going to do something and get caught. Or, if like, think, like, if I get caught, I'm just going to say this. And they can't say it's not true. But probably is. Uh, for context, Corey Richens, after purportedly orchestrating the death of her husband, Eric Richens, penned a heart-wrenching tale titled, Are You With Me? It's a book that chronicles grief written only a year after she allegedly poisoned her spouse with a, spouse with a legal dose of uh, fentanyl in a Moscow mule. These actions were clouded by rumors of an external affair and Eric's looming suspicions. Having once shared with a close friend that Corey might be attempting to poison him, the suspicion further intensified when following Eric's untimely death, Corey was set to close a whopping $2 million deal for a grand 22,000 square foot home, a deal her husband had declined to fund. He declined it. He's dead the next day. In a recent development, just the other week, authorities discovered a six-page handwritten letter titled Walk the Dog in Rich and Cell. This document directed to her mother, Lisa Darden, allegedly contained a playbook on how to coach her brothers into validating a false narrative about Eric Richens' drug acquisitions from Mexico prior to his fatal overdose. Prosecutors were quick to interpret this as a brazen attempt to witness tampering. However, in a twist that can only be described as audacious or utterly fucking insane, Richens' defense in a freshly filed court document Asserts this letter is merely a fragment of a fictional story Corey is penning about her imaginary stint in a Mexican prison. <laughs> okay. How, you know, I, I, I'm friends with a lot of good defense attorneys now, uh, having done this show for a while, but this is one where I got to go, how the fuck do you submit this with a right mind and go, yeah, I, I'm vigorously defending my client. Uh, at this point, I think this is almost like, no, you're lying 
uh, you are making shit up that yeah. that does not really truly have any sort of narrative, which you cannot do as a defense attorney. Surprisingly, everything's so they can just lie. They can't. There has to be some merit for what the fuck they're saying. If Corey, and I'm not saying Corey did, but if Corey went to them and said, I fucking did it, it's game over. They they can't go represent her at that point and say that they know that she did not do it if she's admitted to it. But this yeah, is exactly. about as close as you can fucking get. According to the court filing obtained by Fox 13 now, Richens clarified uh, to her mother, when I first got in here, I was telling you how I got, or uh, telling you how I was writing a book. Those papers were not a letter to you guys. They were my freaking book. I was writing this fictional mystery book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, attempting to further distinguish her fictional account from reality, Richens expounded upon her story, sharing how it involved a quest to Mexico to search for drugs and eventually led to her incarceration in a Mexican prison. This narrative, however far-fetched, is being presented as the explanation for her questionable letter, which does clearly outline what she wants people to say about her story of where she got drugs, how her husband got drugs, and how it wasn't her. It has nothing to do with a fictional fucking story. Yeah. What amplifies the absurdity of these claims is the sheer audacity of Richard's recounting, even suggesting she'd asked her attorney, Sky Lazaro, to smuggle in teeth whitening strips due to the excessive coffee consumption in her fictional Mexican jailhouse. Oh, because that happens a lot in Mexican jails, doesn't it? That's always a really good point to the chapter, too. When you're writing a novel, it just add the white strip part. That's gonna that's a cliffhanger. You're going to keep people... Well, that out. was my favorite part of it from the other day. Will her teeth get whitened enough? Hmm. Uh, Richens' attorney, Sky Lazaro, while defending her client, expressed their intention to further contest the state's allegations and emphasize the, impropri uh, the impropriety of making the letter public. However, defense attorney uh, Steve Burton thought, uh, though not linked with the case, offered an analytical perspective to KUTV, stating, in a case like this, you want to try to protect uh, against convicting somebody before all the evidence is out. Yet he acknowledged the implausibility of Richens' narrative by noting the difficulty of explaining her sudden switch from truth to fiction. The intrigue does not end there. Richens recently underwent a seizure, uh, had a seizure due to uh, being administered the incorrect medication at the Summit County Jail, where she's currently incarcerated. This medical mishap sub subsequently led to the discovery of the controversial letter. Given the circumstances, Richens' defense has moved to accuse the state of breaching its gag order by releasing the letter, suggesting it might influence potential jurors. Yeah. I do are, you know, I, I do think they have a point there. I don't really know why the state released the letter. Uh, this seems like very much an internal thing. It can come out during the trial. It can come out during court. There's no real reason the public necessarily needed to know about this, but it can certainly be brought up at some point in time. You know, and I want to throw this out there too. Could they say, could she say that because of her seizures that she's had, she hasn't been in her right mind, so she didn't realize what she was writing? Do seizures make anyone write uh, fiction about that that lines up very, <laughs> very perfectly with concurrent charges of murder? I I don't know. I guess we'd have to talk to somebody with epilepsy to see what they have to say about how it affects their state of mind. But she, being the prolific creative spirit that she is, <laughs> she may come up with a way to to get around this. I don't know that she's a prolific creative spirit. I think she's an idiot. She wants to be. I think she's just an idiot. I, I, I don't <laughs> know. I mean, there this just, just seems so stupid. It, it just really... It screams to me of someone who is really kind of operating on a fifth grade mindset of life. And if we look at how she handled her life prior to this, the way that things are going with her husband, um, her kind of far fetched ideas of being this, uh, you know, so realtor and she's so smart on flipping homes and this and that. And she really wasn't. And her husband finally said, stop burning our money. And she was like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> You're dead. Um, You're out of here. So, no, I uh, I don't think she's that prolific or that smart. I just think she's dumb. And she thinks that her idiotic fifth grade excuses actually hold ground. 
Uh, and I think she's very going to be in for a rude awakening when uh, all of these things just, I mean, it's just more evident that stacks against her. She should just shut the fuck up. Don't write letters. Don't write your fiction. Don't write anything. Because these things are now more things that pile up on top of the already very damning evidence against you that will put you away for life or possibly, uh, although she's the death penalty has been taken off the table here. I was going to say, or put you to for death. Um, but it, it, it's just really, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by the amount of stupidity in this one uh, because it just really looks dumb. You would think her attorney would would caution her, you know, shut your mouth, stop talking. I mean, sometimes that's just the best advice for people. Just stop talking. Oh, it, it, it is completely. Uh, I can name many cases right now where the counsel is completely inadequate, uh, specifically that of like Asa Elrup, the wife of uh, the long, uh, the alleged Long Island serial killer, Rex Hewerman. That's horrible counsel, the way that they're handling her. She just keeps yep. incriminating herself. Even if she's not, there's nothing to incriminate herself with, she keeps saying shit that looks criminal. Uh, and this too, this just, uh, yeah, it's a fucking book. Bullshit. It's a book. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to think of this, but uh, it is interesting to see. We still don't really know when the trial will take place. One can only imagine she will continue to dig her hole deeper every single day because of her ignorance until she actually gets to court. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.